All right, welcome, Max, to our stage here at CES 2017. Look at this thing. So do I put my head in here? How does this work? Uh, you should keep your head outside of the uh, shielded you can red Always zone. keep your yeah. head outside yeah. of the box. Yeah. There's a sticker on the front. So Max, yeah. introduce yourself and tell us what this is. So uh, I'm Max Zabowski, co-founder and CEO of Formlabs. And Formlabs makes uh, high-resolution desktop 3D printers. Uh, so this is the Form 2. It's our, our second generation product, and um, it uh, works out of the box, easy to use 3D printer for professionals who are designing products, uh, artists, dentists, jewelers, all sorts of different applications. Okay, so these guys like toys, so why don't we describe all the pieces and how this all puts together? Sure. Uh, so what you sort of see here is, um, I'll just start with the cover close here. Uh, this is what uh, feeds the machine. It's a cartridge of resin, and there's kind of a liquid glue that's inside there. And um, it uh, goes into this tank here. And what's inside this machine is a precision optical system that scans a high-power laser at that, that liquid. And this liquid solidifies when that laser hits it. And so it uh, makes really precise thin layers of your part and does that layer by layer. And your part actually grows up out of that tank of resin. So it sticks, it sticks to this, this yep. plate here. Yep. And I think there's actually some stuff under there, right? Yes, there is. OK, cool. And this little guy just kind of like cleans the resin. Yep. All right, so what? So out of that, you get this, one of these rooks or whatever here? Yeah, so um, there's yeah, a few, few new sh things that we launched at CES, uh, different things we're talking about. Um, these are our uh, sort of standard sample parts. You can go to our website and order one for free if you're interested in, uh, in checking out what our machine can do. Um, and one of, the, one of the updates at CES is uh, we are improving our, our base gray material with significantly better surface finish and detail. So you know, this, is the, this is the old one, and, um, and the dark gray is the, the new one, and it's got a much smoother, higher detail finish. And I think the interesting thing is actually inside here, I don't think we can see it, but inside there's like a little hollow, and it's, you can actually see little stairs going up this tower. Yeah, and fine text around the top. And Do you guys want to see this? Does only somebody want to play with this? Yeah? Here, grab it. There we go. The, uh, you, just they, lo you just the, lost that. The interesting thing with this new... Pass it around if you could. The interesting thing with this new material is we, we've always... Uh, one of the, one of our, our main selling points has always been really high resolution, high detail. And with this latest update, pushing that further, it's sort of at the point where you don't see any of the printing artifacts. And it's just, uh, you know... I guess you can maybe call it like retina 3D printing because it's, it's basically at the limit of the detail that you see. Okay. So you guys have been doing this for a number of years. So this latest one reduces almost all the lines on here. So it looks really nice and smooth. What's the difference between like the, some of the 3D printers in there versus this 3D printer? Is there, is there a reason why I would buy this one over uh, a MakerBot or whatever? Yeah, so we, we just talked about that high resolution, high detail, which you can't get on pretty much any other uh, desktop machine. Um, but a really big part of it now is the range of materials. So we, we've expanded um, that to, uh, to about 10 materials now. And uh, we're launching one new really interesting one, uh, which is a ceramic material. So this is, uh, this is a teapot actually made out of real ceramic. And so what, what it is is a material that prints on our machine, comes in a cartridge. Um, and, uh, and then makes kind of like a, a clay, a 3D printed clay, and then you fire that in a furnace the way you would normal ceramic. So this doesn't sound like ceramic, is it? Uh, so it, it's not you know, identical to, okay. uh, to, to porcelain, but it, it is a, it's a hard, you know, high temperature ceramic. And this would be fairly difficult to, to hand do, right? Yes, so it, we were trying to show off the sort of things you can do with, uh, with a printed, uh, uh, a 3D printed ceramic that, you know, just completely impossible with other, other types of ceramics. Okay, um, so the hope has always been that we're gonna have one of these in our homes. Uh, everyone here can have one of these, and they can. We start printing. I don't know ceramic teapots. We don't have to go to IKEA anymore. How close are we to that future? Not very close. Okay. <laughs> um, so we we got started because we looked at there were starting to be desktop printers and uh, you know coming in the world, and people were really excited about them. And the problem is they were pretty much for hobbyists, and we didn't really see a clear path to 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 bring that to the home. Um, but there's a lot of people developing a lot of interesting things, um, professionals designing products, and um, 
and uh, they don't have access, always have access to the tools they need and, and the capabilities they need. Um, so another thing we're showing off at CES is um, this is a, a project from an organization called Handsmith that's developing a, a new low-cost robotic prosthetic hand. Um, it's a really interesting guy, uh, Lyman Connor, uh, who's he's doing it as sort of a, a nights and weekends project. He's an engineer at GE, but he he sort of uh, you know, had this accident, had this experience in a hospital, and met um, young men missing a hand, and and uh, found out that he just couldn't. There are good solutions out there. He just couldn't afford it, so he wanted to build a better, lower cost hand. Um, but along the way, what he's done is he's printed a, all the, the plastic structure here is printed. And so he was doing that originally just to, to, uh, you know, to prototype it and develop it faster. Um, but the plan now is actually to produce each hand uh, custom fit uh, for a person. And he can, because it's printed, uh, not only is it, it lower cost for this sort of low volume product, but actually custom fit for a person. And this is a this is a all 3D printed except for obviously that, the motors and yeah, stuff. Yeah, all that green stuff is in our tough high impact strength resin. And you can use this on you could use this on a daily basis and smack it around and whatever yep. needs to be done. Yeah, he's been testing it uh, with with some patients and uh, and uh, trying to roll this out. So this is a homemade 3D 3D printed hand. So well, you can just call to be it clear. Home, homemade, but what? We, what this is, I think it's something bigger than that. This isn't uh, just a hobbyist project. He is a, you know, he's a trained engineer, but he's, uh, he's doing this in a far faster and with far less resources than something like this would have taken in the past. And so this is you know, it's a, a project he started on the side, but it's something that, that is really seriously commercially relevant and, you know, and is, has the capabilities of those of the $50,000 high-end hands. Okay. And you know, I think that the thing we're really excited about is like the dream of, of uh, accessible professional 3D printer like this is that developing hardware can look more like developing software. Like nowadays, you know, it takes a couple people and you know, in a few months and almost no resources to to potentially uh, bring a groundbreaking app or a website to the world. Hardware has always been much harder. Um, it's slower, more expensive. And uh, I, you know, with tools like this, it's starting to become something that you can, um, with you know, with 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 a good idea and, and some dedication with, and a small small amount of resources, actually make some real impact. I mean, how does it feel to be able to make to go from not being able to do a really high quality print like this uh, to seeing it come out for the first time? That's that must be pretty crazy. Yeah, you should you should really hear uh, uh, Lyman talk about it because it. I mean, it's. It's a it's a powerful feeling to, to take this concept which he had you know in a sort of really emotional meeting with a, with someone who needed something like this and and dream it up and you know in a matter of weeks and months design it make it real and hold it in your hand. All right. So what else are you guys working on? You guys have something called Formex, I guess. Yeah. So with uh, this ceramic material, we're we're putting it under a, a, a brand we call Formex and what. Uh, one of the challenges we've had is because we've been really focused on works out of the box, um, throw any model at it, just press print, and it works every time. That's that's the, our core proposition. But there's a lot of interesting experimental things you can do with a 3D printer, especially one with the with a high performance optical system. Um, but we have a hard time releasing that stuff openly without kind of you know mixing up uh, our brand. So uh, we're going to start doing some of those things under Formex. Uh, so ceramic, because you need to know a bit about using ceramics and how to fire it and all of that. Um, you know, it, we we think it fits well there. We also have uh, um, uh, something we're announcing called uh, OpenFL, which is uh, uh, open access to our the Form One and Form One Plus uh, kind of open access API, really targeted at researchers and people experimenting with materials and things like that. So it's the you could get this to start printing whatever you wanted, really. Uh, you you can do it with the uh, the first generation machines, the the, the Form One, and Form One Plus. Right now, that's what uh, what okay, OpenFL so, is rolled out for. So in terms of what, so say I'm I'm thinking about getting a 3D printer. Am I buying this one? Am I buying something cheaper? Am I buying? Am I looking at your Formex stuff? 
des describe to me who should be looking at, at which uh, which model. If you are developing, you know, especially at CES, if you're developing uh, any kind of sort of consumer electronics, especially anything with where industrial design or aesthetics or ergonomics is important, you definitely want uh, want a printer like this uh, for for that high resolution detail. If you are a jeweler and you want to work with our lost wax casting resin, which you can use to actually make um, precious metal parts uh, from your digital designs. Uh, we actually have a number of dental applications as well where you can print parts that are used in dental procedures. So uh, a whole range of applications. But that's not, I, sh I shouldn't get one of these and, and put it up in my basement and make Yoda heads all day. Uh, you can do that too. We, ha we have we have some customers doing that too. We won't say no. Okay. But that, that's not exactly what we had in mind. All right. Very cool. And you also have uh, you also have bio compatible and some other uh, materials as well. Yeah. So yeah, the uh, one of the materials um, targeted at the dental market is is an FDA certified bio compatible material. So certified for for temporary contact with uh, mucus and blood. Um, so it can be used for different um, uh, medical device applications and things like that. And can you drink out of this? Will this cause any untoward you effects? You can. It's a it's a, a dense centered ceramic now. Um, yeah. All right. So we're so we're in a world where this kind of stuff exists. But at what point is it going to be commonplace? Again, that same IKEA question. Going back to it. But at what point? Think, how many more years do we have to wait we'll before I can print this? Before those? the uh, the challenge with the. Everyone, everyone sees these things advancing and saying, yes, we can have the, uh, the replicator box at home. One of the, the challenges with that, that way of thinking is that, uh, you, so people say, I'll be able to print an iPhone at home. Um, that may, may be possible at some point down the road, but what we can make with bigger, you know, more expensive equipment will also have advanced. And so you might not want uh, the 20-year-old the iPhone. Uh, so I, I don't know whether I believe long term and everyone printing things at home. Um, but this technology is becoming available and these parts are becoming available to people today through, uh, for example, services and people starting to offer mass customized products. I mean, many, uh, it, one of the best examples of uh, 3D printed um, uh, parts consumers in, encounter every day is Invisalign. Invisalign braces are actually, every single one is made from a 3D printed form. And most people don't know that, uh, even though millions of people have them. And I think we're going to start seeing a lot more applications like that, um, where it, it enables these mass customized um, end use applications, even if it's not you printing it at home. And there was a lot of hype about 3D printing a couple years ago. And obviously, that's sort of died down. Where are we in the hype cycle? Does it, are we talking 10 years before there's going to be a really established? Is this an established industry? Or when will it become an established industry? Uh, it, the industry has been around longer than people think. It's, yeah. it's 30 years old, and it's it's been growing steadily. the The hype has been really exciting, and uh, um, you know, allowed uh, companies like us to get started uh, really quickly. Um, but honestly, hype or no hype, we're 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 okay. We're <laughs> we've been growing yeah. quickly. Growing. This will be our third 100% uh, year growth in sales, and. Um, uh, the 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 core use the you know the core value here doesn't matter whether whether it's hyped up or not there's there, there's real things to be done with it. All right, and just one as we as we close out uh, there a quick question about uh, the patents. You had some patent issues early on when you first started making these things. It was still under patent, or it could have been, or whatever you want to say. What's your best uh, advice for dealing with folks who want to attack you on the patent basis? It's a, it's a really difficult thing for a small company to, to deal with because the, the court system is kind of built around all these expenses and fees and lawyers and uh, and if you're if you're mismatched against a much larger organization that, that's a tough thing. Um, I definitely believe in the patent system. I mean I think it needs some reforms, but in general patents encourage innovation. And so you know you, you do need to do your research uh, if you're real if you're getting into uh, a space where there there can be patent activity and. Uh, make sure you're clear there. You should be hopefully inventing things and, and patenting them. And um, you know, sometimes you have to deal with uh, pretty tough situations like we did. Um, yep. It really, really made everything we had to do a lot more difficult because we we had barely gotten started um, before we had to fight that. Um, but it's just like any other challenge a startup deals with. You gotta 
you've got to figure out the sort of guerrilla underground way to, to get it done with less resources uh, than, than you should have. If you guys want to see an interesting movie, there was uh, Print the Legend, right? I think yeah, it's on Netflix. What, yeah. And you can see this, this poor guy running around and being, being abused uh, <laughs> by lawyers for a good two hours. So it's a pretty cool thing. So Max, thank you very much for bringing this thing. How much is this? It's $3,500. Could I get it for like, whatever, $45? Um, maybe like the cover. Maybe the cover? Yeah. Well, then I'll just, I'll just build it slowly okay. over, the, over the next couple yeah. years. All right, thanks a lot, Max, and thank you guys.